So welcome everybody to the IMSC Algebraic Combinatorics Seminar. And it's a great pleasure today to have uh, Ryan Winroot from uh, William and Mary. And uh, he's going to talk about generating functions for involutions and character degree sums in finite groups of Lie type. Ryan? All right. Thanks, Samri. Thank you very much for the invitation. And like we were discussing, I guess this is one of these uh, positive results of the, um, of the pandemic to have these, these seminars where people from all over can speak wherever, as long as they're awake. So yeah, thank you for this. I appreciate it. I gave a talk in the seminar. I was trying to remember exactly how long ago it was. Maybe it was six years ago. Is that right, Omri? Uh, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I, I think it was about six, six years ago. So maybe some of you were, were there for that. I can't exactly remember what I talked about. So I don't know if this is relevant or not to that talk. But anyway, um, so I'm going to share screen. I, I, I'm going to use this document camera for, for written notes. I usually am a chalkboard writer. Um, and um, I'm going to see how this works. And uh, is, this, is this visible for everyone? Yeah, no We're problem. seeing your face. Uh, yeah, now it's visible. Yeah. It's oh, no good. Problem. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Um, so, right, there's the title, and that's, that's where I'm from, uh, um, as, as Omri pointed out. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm kind of giving a, a summary of results that um, have, have come from some methods that really originated with this uh, joint paper with Jason Fullman called Generating Functions for Real Character Degree Sums of Finite General Linear and Unitary Groups. Um, it's been a few years since, since we've written that, but um, our collaboration really um, sparked some ideas and, and turned out to give some, some nice results that I'd been after for a while. Um, so that, that paper was in the Journal of, of Algebraic Combinatorics. And then two more recent papers where I was able to push some of these methods a bit further um, are, are on, uh, well, as you can see, um, finite symplectic groups over fields of characteristic two, real representations of those. And this totally orthogonal finite simple groups, really um, the, the, the title doesn't reflect what results I'll be talking about there. Um, but this is really uh, talking about real representations of, of finite orthogonal groups. Um, so really able to, to cover a lot of the classical groups um, with these methods. So I, uh, start out with just the, the, main, the main question and the main idea that's used. Um, so when, if you have a finite group G and you have some irreducible complex representation, uh, the question um, that I'm interested in is when can you define this representation over the real numbers? That is, um, so for example, if you view it as a matrix representation, when can you choose a basis for V? So all of the images pi of G under that basis have only real entries. Um, so, well, one criterion that, that must, be, uh, must be true for that to be, um, for that to, to be true is that the character or the trace uh, uh, all must be real valued, of course. Um, the traces have to be real valued if that's to be true. However, the, the converse is not true. There are there are finite groups and um, characters, all of which have real values. However, they do not afford a representation which can be defined over the real numbers. Um, so the smallest example of this is the, um, the two-dimensional irreducible representation of the quaternion group uh, of order eight. Um, try and focus a little bit. Oops. Ah, that's slightly more focused. Um, so that, that irreducible two-dimensional re, two representation of, of, of the quaternion group, this is, this is the small ex example where the, the characters are all real valued. How, I mean, the character is real valued. However, it's impossible to define the representation over the real numbers. Um, so for Benius and Schurer, Schurer is the best friend of me in both the combinatorial sense and the representation theoretical sense. Um, Frobenius and Schur uh, gave a, a nice uh, character formula, which tells us um, when this is true. Of course, it's, it's a different 
Um, it's a different issue computing this, uh, this so-called indicator. Um, so this is what I'll call the FS or Fabini Assure indicator. It's, it's the average of the values of the character of the squares of all elements of the group. Um, okay, so what does that tell you? Oops, that up. So this, this indicator can only take three values, zero, one, or minus one. And um, it's zero if the character is not real valued. One, if the question is yes, I, if the answer to the question I asked is yes, that is if, if the representation can be defined over real numbers. These are called um, orthogonal representations. Uh, you can prove that this is the same as, as being able to um, take the image all in an orthogonal group uh, over the underlying vector space V. And um, the indicator gives the value minus one if we're in the case like in that uh, quaternion group where the, uh, the character is real valued. However, the representation cannot be defined over the real numbers. Um, so this is called a, um, a symplectic representation. And again, um, that, that's because this one and minus one actually uh, um, correspond to a bilinear form you can define on the representation space V, which is either orthogonal in this case, uh, the one case, or symplectic in the minus one case. So there's some nice geometry that goes along with that. And one of the nice things about this character formula is that um, it's a nice exercise in, in character theory to show that um, using the orthogon orthogonality relations, you can manipulate the, if you sum over all characters and over, um, uh, over all of these uh, uh, indicators, that the, this almost character degree sum, it's a signed character degree sum, right? We, we take a one for the orthogonal characters, a minus one for the symplectic characters, zero for the non-real valued characters. So if we take that sum, what we get is the total number of elements uh, whose square is the identity in the group. Um, and uh, for just for the sake of convenience, I think traditionally the identity is not considered an involution, but just so I don't have to say the number of involutions plus one, I'll just call, I'll, I'll say the involutions are just those elements which square to one, so which will include the identity. So the main idea here is that if we, can, if we can compute the character degree sum, we can get some information out of this. Um, in particular, all the representations can be defined over R, that is, are all orthogonal, if and only if the character degree sum is equal to the number of involutions. So that's, that's one fact. And then, well, something uh, slightly different, if we only care about the real valued characters, so if we know exactly which characters are real valued, which is often the case for um, finite groups of Lie type, uh, then, then all of the real valued characters um, have representations which can be defined over R if and only if the sum of the degrees of the real valued characters is the number of involutions. So these are really the, um, the things that, that uh, are really the main ideas here. Um, and it, it, it turns out that with generating functions, or um, to use Wilf's invented word, generating functionology, um, which is one of my favorite combinatorial tools, we can we can really get some good information out of this out of these uh, these statements. Okay, so I'd like to start with with an example that I think we all like. Um, and which also has the advantage that I can give details for. Um, so as I move along, I'll give fewer and fewer details. Ah, you can also see through this page, this is a homeschooling uh, worksheet. <laughs> Good scratch paper. Anyway, um, it's one positive thing about homeschooling is I'll have lots of worksheets for, for scratch paper. Um, so the uh, symmetric group of degree n. So first, all of the complex representations of the symmetric group are, are, are understood in many ways. Um, and in particular, it's understood that all of these representations can be defined over R. 
um, and can be defined over the rational numbers, in fact. Um, and so this, this is really an example to kind of see how, how these things all fit together. Um, all the character degrees are understood. So the, the irreducible representations um, of SN are, are parameterized by partitions. Um, and if you have, and there's many constructions of that, which um, many of you understand quite well. Uh, so first, the, um, the degree of this character has a very nice formula in terms of the diagram, the, the Young diagram or Ferrer's diagram of, of the partition. So if, if we draw the diagram for lambda and then for each of the, I'm just calling it a box, if, if one draws a Young diagram, for each of the boxes in this, in this partition, we can compute the, the hook length, take the products of all the hook lengths, and then n factorial over that product gives you a dimension, the degree of that irreducible character. Um, so, right, so H of B, this is this hook length. And um, I'm, I'm using, of course, uh, I.G. McDonald's book on symmetric function theory, I, I believe might have more pages on ex exercises and examples than on, than on uh, non-exercises or examples. Um, great resource for, for statements. Um, so one of these, so now little s, little s lambda, this is the, uh, the sure polynomial. So if we take the sure polynomial in, in M, in M variables, and we plug in one over M and take, take the limit as M goes to infinity. So as it turns out, this is equal to the reciprocal of the product of hook lengths, uh, in the diagram for lambda. Okay. So there, there is this whole, um, characteristic map for the irreducible characters of the symmetric group, which translates characters into, um, into sure functions. And so there's this beautiful uh, um, translation between sure functions and characters. And in particular, here's one way you can, so if we multiply both sides by n factorial, the left side gives the character degree in terms of, um, in terms of the uh, uh, sure function value. Um, Ryan, is there some yes. scaling factor missing on the left-hand side? Uh, if you just take, for example, um, the uh, 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 one, the lambda to be the partition one of one, then the character is uh, just uh, x1 plus x2 plus, uh, how many, or maybe there's something. Oh, no, 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 no. So lambda here, I switched, I switched from M, from N to M. So, so um, let's see. Or maybe you're taking more factors here. Ah, ah, okay. How many factors do you have in there? How many variables do you have in there? These are, these are M, M variables. Oh, okay, okay, I see. M yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one. Yeah, yeah. So the, the number of variables is increasing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no problem. No problem. Um, so one thing we can do, we're interested in the sum of the character degrees. So we want to confirm this statement about all the representations being definable over R um, using, using this, this combinatoric. So, well, there's also a very nice statement in, in McDonald about the sum of sure functions. So eventually we want to take the, the sum of character degrees. So we're going to take the sum of these, of these sure function values. The sum over all partitions of the sure function in M variables is given by this nice product expansion. And forms like this are going to pop up a lot uh, as we go on to, to um, finite groups of Lie type. There'll be some product over I and then some product over pairs where one is less than the other. Um, so this is an, uh, another, yet another example in McDonald's book. And so now if we are to uh, replace X1 through XM with U over M, so U will be our, our variable for a generating function and we take the limit, well, that's taking the limit on the left-hand side when we, um, well, we're, we're taking a product of these things and limit is going to infinity. And so we have these, these two, uh, expressions which are replacing these products when we replace xi with u over m and taking that limit gives us an exponential um, and 
there happens to be a very nice exponential generating function for the number of involutions in the symmetric group. And the number of involutions in SN um, is exactly n factorial times the coefficient of un in this exponential generating function. Therefore, what we're getting here is that the coefficient of, uh, of, of u to the n in this expression is two things. It's both the number, well, up to a factor of n factorial, is the number of involutions and is the summer, sum of character degrees. So now this, this gives us that all of these things can be defined over the real numbers. So again, this is, uh, this is just getting, getting a fact that we know through many other methods um, through, through this combinatorial method, but hopefully it demonstrates where, um, you know, the power in this method could be where you don't know how to construct. I mean, the nice thing about the symmetric group is that there's, um, there's so many ways we can construct the modules. You know, there's, there's all of these different constructions for the irreducible uh, CSN modules. Um, and so we know everything about, about these representations. Not everything, but almost everything. Um, and so uh, the, the situation is quite different for finite groups of Lie type where the modules themselves aren't constructed. And so there's, there's a lot more missing information there. Um, so I was, uh, in the abstract, I, I said that there would be examples from, from vial groups. I, I uh, decided not, not to go into details for these vial groups, although this is in the first section of this paper um, uh, with Jason Fullman. And I should also say all of these papers are, are I have up on my webpage. So if you're interested, um, you can go to my webpage and, and all, all of the papers are there. Um, but there's very similar computations for these other classical vial groups, type B slash C, type D, where the irreducible characters, say, of type B are given by um, pairs of partitions. And for part D, a certain, uh, well, it's an index two subgroup, so with a certain evenness restriction on those pairs of partitions. And so it's, it's a very similar looking computation, just, um, uh, just slight, slightly different. Okay, so now let me go on to um, some finite groups of Lie type. So now we have GL and Q. Q is a prime power, so these are an invertible n by n matrices over a finite field. Um, now, I'm going to stick with Q odd here, simply because, um, well, the, uh, in terms of the involutions, when Q is odd, to detect an involution, you just need a one and a minus one eigenspace. And that's simpler than in the characteristic two case when you might have these unipotent blocks, um, uh, two, two by two unipotent blocks, which, which can contribute to involutions. And so the form is different, um, but it's, the methods still go through. It's just a totally separate case, uh, which we'll see a little later, um, the characteristic two case and some of the other classical groups um, where things are not known, this, this method gives us a lot there. Um, so first, again, in the general linear group case, in 1981, Zelobinsky proved that um, all of the irreducible characters have so-called sure index one uh, over the rationals. And in particular, all of the, not all characters are real valued. However, the real valued characters have representations which are defined over the real numbers. Um, and so this is, uh, this, this is a result which came from, um, it, it follows from a deeper result of Zelovinsky uh, on the Shore indices, which, um, which comes from his book, let's see the, uh, what's it called? A, um, it's a lecture note to mathematics, a Hopf algebra approach to representations. It's, it's in this book. Um, and so it's quite a lot of work and so one of uh, Jason Fullman and I's um, uh, goals was to get this result kind of without having to go through sure indices and to see, can we use, this use these methods to, to get this result somewhat directly? Um, so the result we know, and so we, we have a combinatorial proof of this, which I'll, I'll outline. Um, so again, 
we can count the involutions. This is just a bit of combinatorics over, um, over finite uh, vector spaces over finite fields. We can count subspaces. And if we do this, it's another great exercise. If we do this, we get this nice sum. We could also write it in terms of um, so-called Q binomial coefficients, um, but we, we won't use that here. Uh, so gamma n will just be the expression for the order of the general linear group um, of degree n. So this is this polynomial in, in Q. Well, it is a polynomial if we, if we distribute some of those things. Um, and so the one, when one goes through the exercise, the number of involutions in GL and Q is given by the sum with this factor in front. So there will be, uh, in SN, there was this factor of N factorial. So we'll see these various Q versions of N factorial that we have to factor out front to get nice expressions. So in GLN, it's just this Q to the N minus one down to Q minus one. Um, and this Q to the N choose two will get absorbed in here. So, but this factor will kind of be factored out and it's this modified expression that, that will be nice in the, in the combinatorial sense. Um, so first, um, oh, I should close my email. I think that, that ding came through. Um, so, so first, the, uh, if, if we want a generating function for this, well, there's, there's some identities that one has to kind of crawl through to get a generating function for this expression, but there are some classical identities. I mean, one can see where this expression, this is a classical identity, which one can find in Andrew's book um, on, on partition theory. Um, so this is a classical product sum identity. So you can see where this, where this, would come in handy, this expression at the bottom is exactly coming, almost exactly coming in um, with this expression for the order of the general linear group. And if one crawls through some of these identities, then we get a very nice expression for uh, a generating function for this number of involutions. Mo again, modulo this kind of Q version of factorial. So we get a very nice expression for this number of involutions. And now the game is, can we now find the sum of the real valued characters, degrees? And well, the answer is yes. Otherwise I wouldn't have, wouldn't have given this talk, I suppose. Um, so sparing details here as, um, well, I, I, again, this is more of an overview of, of, of where we can apply these methods. So this is a, a bit of a computation, but there's a nice parameterization of irreducible characters of the general linear group. Um, chapter four of McDonald. Uh, my copy of McDonald has, um, if you look at the side on the pages, the uh, chapter four is extremely dirty because that's what I've, I've thumbed through many times over the years. But uh, it's basically an adaptation of Green's paper um, to translate everything into sure functions. Um, but there's, there's essentially a nice uh, Q version of the characteristic map for SN, which one can kind of expand to a characteristic map of the general linear, finite general linear group. And there's a, a few places where one can conclude which of these irreducible characters through this parameterization are real valued. But the point is that if we go through this long computation, um, we can compute a, uh, a, a generating function for the real character degree sum to be exactly well modified by this factor to be exactly what we get for the involution generating function. And so again, we have, this, um, we have this, this result where all of the real valued characters come from representations which can be defined over the real numbers. Um, so to connect this with uh, the combinatorics of the symmetric group a bit more, um, I, I should say this, this, this expression unipotent representations which um, some, some of you may not uh, be, be familiar with the unipotent representations of finite groups of Lie type. Um, for the general linear group, 
what these things are, are the irreducible, if one takes the trivial character of the Borel subgroup, that is the upper triangular subgroup of GLNQ, and induces the trivial character up to all of GLNQ, then the irreducible components of that are what are called the unipotent representations. And um, for the general linear group, these are exactly parameterized by partitions of n. And so um, there's this very nice formula for the degrees of these unipotent representations, which play an extremely important role. Um, and there's this Q version of the hook length formula. And so there's a lot of the SN, which translates to this GLNQ with this Q, uh, Q parameter inserted. Now, the unipotent representations of other finite groups of Lie type are not defined in such a simple way by inducing a trivial character from a Borel subgroup, um, but rather you need this deline lustig theory to define it. Um, and that includes for the unitary group uh, and, and the other classical groups. So I'll, I'll say a bit more about that just to give a better feeling for what these, these unipotent representations are, but um, they do depend on, on the deline lustig theory of, of finite groups of Lie type. Um, okay, so now let's move on to the unitary group, which it's a, it's a nice follow-up to the general linear group, but on the other hand, it's also the most difficult case. Um, so so one, one thing that is very different is that um, whereas the indicators for the general linear group are understood, it's understood that the Frobenius shear indicators are either zero or one. It's understood which characters for the general linear group are real valued. And so we can sort through exactly from the parameterization what, what those are. It's an open question for the finite unitary group. Um, it is known that minus one indicators occur. So this was the uh, impetus for the project with Jason Fullman here was to one, see if we can push through this calculation for the general linear, general linear group and then see if we can get any information about the finite unitary group. Um, and well, we get some information, but the, 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 the problem is still open, I should say. Um, so these minus ones do occur. Um, so what's happening here? So there's a, there's a really, really beautiful, um, correspondence for the character theory of the finite unitary group. So much of the character theory for the unitary group can be obtained from the general linear group by just putting a minus sign on all of the cues. Um, and so it's, there was a, uh, a mathematician named Enola uh, from Finland who, who noticed this. So this is, this is named Enola duality in, in that mathematician's honor. Um, who basically went through Green's paper and tried to do it for the unitary group and made this conjecture that you can get all the irreducible characters by, by essentially going through a lot of those things and changing Q to minus Q. And there were some, some things left to prove. Um, uh, it boiled down to the evaluation of, of, of the green, so-called green functions for the unitary group. And it wasn't until the, um, the, mid 1990s when uh, Kawanaka settled this with um, Deline Lustig theory and, and, and um, let's see, gen oh, generalized Gelfin-Grave characters, which, a whole, which is a whole different story, which, but are tools which have started to um, become used to understand a lot of, of, of character values of, of finite groups of, of Lie type. Anyway, Enola duality is a whole other story. It's a beautiful thing. And it helps us here in that um, we, can, we, we can describe the characters of the unitary group. We can, define, we can describe the, um, the degrees of the characters of the unitary group. We can describe which characters are real valued using the parameterization. So using all of this, um, Jason Fulman and I were, were able to uh, oh, this page is a cliffhanger. So the sum of the, degree, sum of the character degrees of the real valued irreducible characters of the unitary group, and again, this is still Q odd, 
it's given by a mess. Um, so when Q is odd, it's this, uh, again, you see that there's this Q switching to minus Q. Um, so this factor in front, instead of Q to the N minus one, dot, 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 Q minus one, you have a bunch of Q switching to minus Qs. But we have a generating function for the character degree sum. And it's this big mess. So what's happening here? Um, in the case of the general linear group, it's something similar, except the, the, when, you choose, when you change the minus Qs back to Qs, well, some of these pluses turn into minuses and you get a lot of nice cancellations, none of which happen for the finite unitary group. So in some, in some sense, this, this calculation showed us um, showed us why the, whereas the character theory for the unitary group turns out to be very nice in terms of the general linear group, the Frobini sure indicators turn out to be complicated because kind of the wrong things switch signs in the computation. Um, and, and things get quite hairy. Um, but we do get this kind of, I don't know, I guess I've seen worse generating functions. I don't want to say too much bad about it, but it's a bit, it's, it's a, it's a bit hard to, to understand, I'll say. Um, but what can we do? Well, so this is the sum of the degrees of the real valued characters. And so this is a generating function for this expression. So I'm separating out, there's some that have indicator one, that some have indicator minus one. Well, if we can compute the number of involutions, well, from that Frobini Schur indicator formula, um, remember the, the number of involutions is the signed sum of character degrees. So we put a minus sign in front of the, the, uh, the symplectic character degrees. And so if we can find a generating function for the for the involutions, which turns out to be very nice, then we have something going because we can then solve for these character degree sums for the orthogonal and the symplectic degrees. And so that's exactly what we did. So it turns out that Enola duality is very nice to us in terms of the involutions. Um, again, we can calculate minus one and plus one eigenspaces, but they have to respect the the, the unitary form, the Hermitian form on the, uh, on the um, FQ vector space. And so we get exactly um, Enola duality. Well, there's, an, there's this one nuance. It's an extra factor of minus one to the N choose two, which is not in the factor for the, the real character degree sum. But we do get a very nice generating function for the number of involutions. And so putting those things together, we get uh, generating functions for, yeah, it, all, it, it fits. I was managed to fit it on the page um, for the uh, sum of the degrees of the irreducible characters of Frobenius sure indicator plus or minus one. Well, here's the sign plus or minus one. And again, that's just using these two results. And it's this big mess. And it is a mess. Um, we were able to expand it using uh, some, some results, um, but we were able to expand it using values of Hall-Littlewood um, polynomials, which don't have good expressions. Um, but we were able to check that this is at least correct for, for small values of n where things are understood. So, um, so really the punchline is we were, be, we were able to make some computations and say, oh, okay, well, this, this is something. If we could ex expand this, which seems very difficult, um, we can, for the first several terms, we were able to confirm what was already known with these things. Um, but also, I mean, it, it, it kind of confirmed to me why, I mean, another combinatorial point of view as to why the question of the indicators for the finite unitary group are difficult to get a handle on. Um, there's, there's some twisting that's going on that, that really scrambles things up in a funny way, which is not, which is, is, is not done with the 
um, complex representation theory. That is, the Enola duality really, um, really says something about the complex characters of the general linear group and the unitary group, but um, a much less for the real representation theory for the general linear group and the unitary group. And it's that index two um, uh, that there's too many twos. I mean, that, that seems to be the theme of what my work, once I get too many twos that scramble things up and I'm not sure how they scramble things up, well, things get funny. Um, and, uh, and to use a dirty word, um, there, there may be, I, I suspect there's some cohomology going on here that I don't understand. Um, and, um, y y yeah, there's, there's, I need to know more geometry. Um, sorry, maybe you can bleep out cohomology in the, in the video, Tommy. I'll bleep um, it. What's that? I said I'll bleep it out. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So now let's move on to some other, um, some other classical groups. So the special orthogonal group of odd degree uh, over a finite field. So first Rod Gow um, uh, from Ireland and he's in, in Dublin. Um, he showed that when Q is odd, that all of the indicators are one. So that's very nice behavior. Um, but his methods were very group theoretic. So it was an inductive, uh, an inductive proof using so-called um, real elementary two subgroups of the special orthogonal group and analyzing all of those. Um, and, and basically um, the form of these so-called uh, real elementary subgroups at two have a very understandable form when Q is odd and they involve products or reproducts of other special orthogonal groups or general linear groups, things we understand. But when Q is even all of a sudden, these subgroups have, have forms that which we can't understand. Um, we get unipotent subgroups. Well, the seal of two subgroup of the special orthogonal group of odd, well, special orthogonal group when Q is even is a unipotent subgroup. And the representation theory of unipotent subgroups of groups of Lie type are notoriously uh, difficult to understand. And so um, his method that he used fails for Q even. And so I went about trying to use these methods to get at these results. But the starting point is when Q is odd, the sum of the character degrees is the number of involutions from Gao's result. Without having to compute, we know from Gao's result and from Fermi's and Schur that this is true. Okay, so first, what is the number of involutions? Um, so Fulman, Grolnick, and Stanton have a beautiful paper from several years ago um, where they uh, find asymptotics for the number of, of, of involutions in various classical groups. Um, and they have a very nice generating function and again, here is our factor that is somehow playing the role of n factorial in the symmetric group case. Um, so if we, if we factor out this, this product, um, then the number of involutions uh, of this odd degree uh, special orthogonal group is the coefficient of u to the n in this generating function, where this e, um, well, it's either 2 if q is odd or 1 if, if q is even. So that's, that's the difference in the q even or odd case. Okay, so we have a generating function now for, this is when, when Q is odd, so when E is two, this is also a generating function for the character degree sum for the special orthogonal group. So it was conjectured that all of these indicators are one when Q is even, and to connect this with um, uh, the abstract in one of the papers that I referenced at the beginning, when Q is even, the special orthogonal group of, of degree 2n plus 1 is isomorphic to the symplectic group of degree 2n. Um, so these are really, some, when Q is even, these are really symplectic groups as well. So the, the method here is to now use, so in, in the case of the general linear group, we have Green's paper and McDonald's nice combinatorial description of irreducible characters. And we have combinatorial expressions, sure functions, all that good stuff. 
for computation. Um, and for the unitary group, we have we, Enola duality for the complex characters, which makes things very nice in terms of computing things. Um, in this case, uh, we have to use Deleen Lustig theory. And um, this is, this is a, a, a more complicated endeavor. Um, so I should say that Deleen Lustig theory, um, well, it, it, was, it was a method of generalizing um, Green's construction where um, essentially green uses, um, green, green uses a certain type of Harishandra induction. Um, and the nice thing about general linear groups is that the Levy subgroups uh, are contained in rational parabolic subgroups. That is, if you take a, a block of smaller general linear groups on the diagonal, this is contained in a nice um, stable, um, stable under the Frobenius action parabolic subgroup. And this makes the representation theory very nice. Um, and for groups, for other groups, this is not necessarily true. And so one has to use, you'll have to use a bleep again, uh, cohomology, so certain construction of, of Deleen's on l adic cohomology, um, they were able to construct these generalized characters, which are, are um, uh, integer linear combination of irreducible characters. And in this case, the unipotent characters are irreducible characters which um, occur in something called the Deleen Lustig character, which is Deleen Lustig, you basically put the words Deleen Lustig in front of the words. Deleen Lustig induced um, from the trivial character on a maximal torus. Okay, so it's, it's, but it is a generalization of the definition of unipotent characters for the general linear group. But the point is that this is, um, we can get a long way in computing directly the character degree sum of the special orthogonal group. So the question is, can I, can I go through a computation like Jason Fullen and I did um, for this using, using the, the um, Deleen Lustig theory? And what happened is I was able to get a generating function up to one factor. There was one factor, this W of U. So if, if we make this computation using this parameterization of irreducible characters and character degrees, um, then we can get very far. But there's one thing that um, I wasn't able to get, which was, so, Oh, and you can see this same basic form that I said would happen, but now there's this i plus j is odd. This e again is, is one if, if q is even and it's two if q is odd. Um, so this w of u, w for me stood for what, what is this? I, I, I didn't know what it was, so that's why I called it w. Um, so this is a gener essentially a, a generating function for the unipotent characters of the special orthogonal groups. So these things are, are uh, Lustig computed all of these unipotent characters um, of, these, of these finite groups of Lie type. Uh, well, he computed a lot of them and then they were, they were finished by uh, uh, other mathematicians as well. But, but Lustig invented, basically invented this theory of unipotent characters. Um, and they're parameterized by these other combinatorial objects called symbols which um, are not quite pairs of partitions. Um, and, and that not quite is what makes them complicated. Um, and so the, I, I could not calculate this thing directly. <clears throat> However, the point here is that when Q is odd, we have exactly the character degree sum because we know all of the, in, uh, all of the indicators are one. So we know the number of involutions is the character degree sum. And so using that fact, I can, I can solve for what this is. And once I know what this is, I can sum it back in because one thing we do know about the unipotent characters of these things is that they are just polynomials, the degrees are polynomials in Q and they don't care whether Q is even or odd. So that's one thing that's invariant under, um, uh, about these unipotent characters is that their degrees are still parameterized 
by the same combinatorial objects, whether Q is even or odd, and their degrees are the same polynomials in Q. So this generating function is the same whether Q is even or odd. And so what I can do is use this information to, sub to, to solve for this expression, sub it back in to see what the character degree sum is in the even case, and what we get is exactly this, this result. So this is this main result of, of this paper two. And um, so we get this nice expression for the uh, kind of modified character degree sum for these things. And we get, we recover, well, we get this new result when Q is even that all of these indicators are one. Um, and so this, this, I was very excited about uh, having figured this out because I, I was stomped on it for nearly a decade. And because of this work with Jason Fullman, it gave me this idea of, of, of pushing through these combinatorial results. Um, so one of the questions that I'd really like to answer here is whether there's a direct combinatorial proof for this identity for the sum of the uh, um, unipotent character degrees. And um, that's something I've been thinking about some. Um, again, my, the, the papers, the papers uh, on my webpage have of obviously a lot more detail um, and it, it kind of can tell you what, what it is I'm looking for. Um, in terms of a combinatorial proof. But there should be some kind of sure function, um, some kind of modified sure function, not, not quite corresponding to a pair of partitions, but some kind of pair of partitions modulo some identity, some identification that one has to make with these, with these symbols. Um, so just to, con just to finish up, um, I mean, for, for even degree, there's, there's this difference in behavior. So these, um, when the special orthogonal group here, there's two different types, there's split and non-split, but when the degree is divisible by four uh, and Q is odd, um, Gao obtained that all of these indicators are one. And when the degree is two mod four, then not all of the, characters are real valued, but those that are, are orthogonal. They do have indicator one. And so with a lot more trouble, um, we can do the same sort of thing. And um, so for this, we get a, a, a modified character degree sum. So that one difference here is that we have to take the, the split and non-split orthogonal, um, special orthogonal groups separately. Um, they're modified by slightly different, there's a, there's a, there's a minus, there's a Q minus one here, there's a Q plus one here. So things get a little, a little more complicated. The delene lustig theory is a little more complicated for several reasons, but we get this nice generating function, which is very similar to, let me bring back, so the only difference here is this exponent changes from a 2i to a 2i minus one. And other than that, it's the exact same generating function. And so this also motivates me to, to find a, a purely combinatorial uh, proof of these things. And again, for Q even, we get that these indicators are, have this nice behavior. Um, so, um, right. So I, I, I uh, was really happy to, to, to close up these Q even cases here um, that were open since 1983, Rod Gao was, was always very, I should, I should thank him um, for, for motivating me to look for these, these proofs. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, like I said, the next step really is to find, to understand these things. Why do we have these nice, nice expressions? Um, so maybe in another 10 years, uh, hopefully less, um, I'll be able to give a talk with a combinatorial proof of these things. Um, and really what it comes down to is, is I, I have to understand these, these symbols of Lustig um, in a deeper way. And um, there's, there's, some, there's some work, um, there's some, uh, uh, some work, gosh, who, who does the work? I should, I should know this. Um, well, there's some work in, in kind of, defining what a hook length is for these symbols and having some kind of hook length formula for character degrees of unipotent characters. Um, 
And those things I, I don't understand. I'm in the process of trying to understand those. Um, so I'll, I'll stop here. And um, yeah, thank you very much for, for coming. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any questions that I can. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, let's uh, thank Ryan. You can Thanks. Yeah, let's see if uh, others have any questions first. Uh, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, um, my question is, um, so what do we know about the Galpin model for those finite group of Lie types? Ah, yes, good question. So, um, and in fact, the, the Gelf, so a Gelfon model, um, this is a way of, of writing the sum of all irreducible ref representations of a finite group. And for the general linear group, there's a very nice one um, due to uh, Klatchko. Um, and uh, so for GLN, and, and, and I'm, I'm guessing you know about, about the one for GLN, there's a very nice one for GLN um, where one, one takes the induced trivial character from the symplectic group and then makes uh, a diagonal block of the symplectic group smaller while replacing the other block with the unipotent and having a, uh, um, a Gelfin gray of character on that unipotent block. So, um, so the answer is that for the unitary group, there is a nice Gelfin model where one replaces the parabolic induction in the Klatchko model with delene lustig induction. And so um, one gets that it's, it's the direct sum of irreducible characters. The only disadvantage to this is that um, these delene, when you replace the, the parabolic induction with delene lustig induction, um, you lose the understanding of it as an actual module because these things are, are um, really these generalized characters and you have the right cancellations that happen, that things happen nicely. Um, and for, as far as I know, for other classical groups, um, I, I don't know anything about Gelfand models being constructed for the other classical groups. For the vile groups, they're, they're under, understood quite well. And one would hope that, that one might be able to modify those things, but I haven't had any luck in finding them. But you're 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 right in that this I mean that that is a good question in that if one can construct these things, um, we can understand uh, a lot about about the representations. I should say another thing for the unitary group. Well, for the general linear group, constructing this Gelfand model, you basically have irreducible characters appearing with multiplicity one in a whole bunch of things, and that gives us control of indicators. So this is another way of understanding the indicators of the general linear group. However, for the unitary group, when you replace parabolic with delene lustig induction, it's completely not understood what happens to indicators because there's all the sign switching when, when you get these generalized representations instead of standard representations. Um, and so another question I have is, uh, if, you, if you take delene lustig induction, what happens to the indicator of, of a character? And that's a question I have no idea how to answer. That this is another one of these things, there's too many signs. I don't know what happens to the signs. And there's some kind of cohomology that, that comes in and, and, and puts signs wherever it wants to. And I don't understand how it does it yet, so. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh, maybe I can also say this, 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 um, this Deline Lustig model, Gelfand model of the unitary group this is in a paper of uh, Nat Thiem and I. Um, see, I can write. So, uh, Nat, Nat Thiem, so, and Thiem, uh, and V. This is a, a paper, characteristic map of finite unitary groups. So this is where um, characteristic map of finite unitary groups. This is on my webpage as well. So th this is where we basically work through chapter four of McDonald, um, but go through all of the Enola duality and figure out what happens with combinatorics. And one of the things we get is, is we are able to adapt the scale fund model for the general linear group. Sorry. 
so that generating function you have right there on that sheet of paper so so that yep yep so so is there any sort of way of thinking about it in terms of young tableau or uh... i i i sure think there is um but you know i i came up with these so for the identity for these 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 things for the um general linear and unitary group um one can compute them essentially through um through partitions and sure function identities. Um, and this I came up with completely around the back door through the character theory and solving for these expressions. Mm. Um, and that is exactly the hope that there is some way of taking these symbols of Lustig, understanding them in terms of some kind of modified diagrams um, and hook links and proving this, this, um, this identity directly. And I have no idea how to do it right now. Um, I mean, I, I, maybe it's not, maybe it's not true. I have no idea. I mean, I'm starting to get some idea. That's some, actually that, that was a problem when we talked a few weeks ago that I was uh, hoping to get you interested in, Omri. So maybe this talk succeeded in getting you interested in it. So we should talk about that. Hmm. I have a few ideas, but nothing solid yet. Okay, uh, any more questions? Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, it's not really, I, I don't know if this is a question, but the, um, the first identity that you put up about uh, for the symmetric group, for the number of yes, yes. between the sum of the character degrees. So yes. to combinatorialists, that's a well-known fact that follows from uh, Robinson, Shenstead, Knuth, the algorithm. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. There's yes. another whole, yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, absolutely. So um, that, that would be a very combinatorial, in fact, e even the Gelfand model thing yeah. can, can be very compactly expressed in terms of that bijection. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And um, that's, that's really part of my program is, is, is trying to take all of these different points of view for the symmetric group and figure out which ones adapt to these groups of Lie type. Um, and so this is, this is one of those points of view. Um, the Gelfand model, um, yeah, so as I was saying, the Gelfand model, which, which also can be described in terms of uh, combinatorics of, of young tableau, adapts um, to the general linear group. And in fact, there's some, there is, um, gosh, I'm blanking on names. There's, there's a nice paper of, of a, um, a more young tableau -y, uh, 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 description of the Gelfand model for the general linear group, which actually is is exactly a, a, um, along the theme that you're that you're saying, um, and um, you know, and and that's really what I'm looking for here is is can I can I go back to the young tableau, except some young tableau with 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 the uh, um, with corresponding to these symbols, and and push forward some kind of some kind of combinatorial description like that. So you're exactly right. That's, a, that's exactly what I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get at, to connect all of these dots. Okay. Or boxes, okay. if you. <laughs> Very interesting. So. I would like to point out one more thing. Yes. So, uh, this identity here, the product of her uh, i less than j and one by u square by q i plus j. So that thing you can um, think of uh, generating function for labeled simple graph on one to n vertices. And you uh -huh. can uh, uh -huh. give weight to the i one um, vertex as u by q power i. Ah, um, so that's nice. Uh, so w one of the things I've been having trouble, so I know if, if one doesn't restrict the parity of the sum of I plus J, uh, I, I've known several, you know, interpretations of this sort of product. Are you aware of anything where, where the, where it takes on any good meeting when, when you restrict the, the parity of the sum of the indices? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, okay, I okay. That thing. Yeah. If, if you do happen to find something like that, I, w I would love to hear about it because it's, it's, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really trying to understand what's going on there. 
And really this I plus J odd, uh, I mean, in the calculations, it comes out of, of a bunch of factors canceling and it just happens to be what's left. So, so um, you're just saying just the A's are allowed only uh, between two vertices I and J, which sum up to odd, right? Sum is odd. Yes, I'll think about it. Oh, that's right. Okay. So that's it. That's it. Yeah. Sum is odd. This is a correspondence of Burge. With Burge the... correspondence, yeah. How, how, does one, how does one spell this? P-U-R-G-E. P-U-R-G-E. Huh. Okay. I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask Big Joy to send you the reference. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you very much. That would be very nice. Burge correspondence. Uh-huh. I haven't heard of this. Great. Another trail to follow. Yeah, these are all versions of the RSK correspondence uh, exotic yeah. kind of variants. Ah, okay. Or, yeah, no, I don't know these things. Oh, that would be great to see. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Or you can see that these are just little roots identity. I see. Sounds yeah. promising. It's all in McDonald, actually. Exactly. Yeah. Probably yeah, so the I part of McDonald. Probably, probably the part of McDonald that. I haven't made dirty with my thumbing through yet. <laughs> so my copy of McDonald is thumbed through except for chapter uh, four. So ah, ah. <laughs> that's where I kind of, you know. <laughs> that's funny. Didn't quite make it till there. <laughs> but that's where it all comes together, right? And, yeah. 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 I mean, my background is in representation theory, really. So that's, yeah, that, that was my entry point to all of this stuff. Okay, so I'll stop recording this. Um...